Welcome to episode 19 of Celtic Sagas and Law. I'm your host, Martin Vaughan Watkin. In this episode, I'd like to do a little bit about um, the standing stones, stone circles and cromleths in um, the Celtic lands. As a very wide subject, so I'll just do a little bit for this episode. Now, um, these uh, stone circles and standing stones and cromleths, etc., uh, it's a popular misconception and they were built and used by the Druids but uh, they go way back into prehistory thousands of years before the Druids on saying that they do have carry the names of um, for example King Arthur's Stone Merlin's this or uh, Witches that or Maidens this and sometimes Saint something or other including Druid Circle and so forth now, many of the stones and stone circles, etc., have uh, legends on their origin. Uh, for for example, um, say, uh, King Arthur's stone, there's two legends with that one. The first one is that um, King Arthur was on the edge of the Gower <clears throat> and he found a stone in his shoe. So he took the shoe out, uh, took, the, took, the, took the stone out and threw it across the gower and it landed and the stone was so proud of being in King Arthur's stone, is King Arthur's shoe that it swelled up inside. It's an interesting story but um, sometimes they give, uh, the stories attached to them actually give a little hint to what they were used for. Now up until about the mid 20th century King Arthur's stone for argument's sake had a um, tradition linked to it that um, unmarried maidens would uh, at a full moon crawl underneath the stone because the stone itself rests on another three small stones and this would make them lucky in love and to bag themselves a good husband. Now if you go back to the story and the two together you can see again inverted commas to quote the, the legend again it swelled with pride. Well you know what happens to a lady when she's pregnant. Now if you go to the stone itself you'll see there's actually a slit in the stone which is almost vaginal in appearance. Now, around the Victorian times, probably, the I haven't traced the origin fully of the story, that uh, some, let's call him industrious Victorian, said this was the stone that uh, Excalibur was in. On the page, I'll put actual video, you can see a sword in, in the stone. Obviously, other stones then um, have origin stories, which we don't know what the original purpose was. For example, the, the there are three standing stones in Mulver Hill in um, Carmarthenshire. And until about the um, early 20th century, they were painted three colours. They were red, blue and white. Nothing to do with the uh, Union flag as far as I know. But the story uh, attached to them is that there were once three uh, wives that... Um, went up to the hill to uh, uh, process corn on a Sabbath on a Sunday and the village folk warned them not to commit such a sin and work on the Sabbath and the three maidens sent them packing and goss, uh, got the Christian god cursed them and they were turned to stone and the colours of the stones matched the dresses that they were wearing. Um, as well as... Um, standing uh, sta uh, man-made stones as in stone circles and standing stones etc there are many um, natural rock formations that have stories linked to them they are impressive geological uh, structures within the landscape um, in an earlier episode we covered the story of uh, the sleeping giant um, if you go back to the, on the page you'll see a picture it looks like a man lying down now, in mid Wales, there's a another interesting uh, geological feature. It is an outcrop of rock known as the Lonely Shepherd. It stands alone there. It's very impressive, a bit difficult to get to if you get the chance. I'll post pictures and details how to get to it on the page. But uh, the story goes that there was once a shepherd that um, used to uh, live on his own and he was very lonely. Uh, and he was a very cruel man as well. And he met uh, a young maiden and married her. And he was very cruel and abusive to her. And uh, 
In her despair, she took herself down to the river and threw herself in and drowned. Now, she was very um, friendly with the local fae, and like in the story of the uh, Princess of Penard, uh, the fairies took revenge and they cursed the shepherd and turned him into the into the rock. And every mid uh, midsummer, he must uh, go down. He, re- he reanimates into human form, according to the story, and goes down to uh, the river and must look for her uh, body and pray for her soul and uh, then return before sunrise and again turns back into stone till the following year. This is very uh, this this. Um, is very common as well with some standing stones. Uh, there is one near Margam for argument's sake that um, every Christmas Eve night goes down to Swansea uh, Swansea Bay because the standing stone itself is in a field just off the M4 um, between junctions 37 and 36. You can see it. Uh, it's on the if you're driving eastwards, the steelworks on the bay are on your right, and if you look into the farm on the left, you can see the standing stone there. And it goes down and has a, a swim and then comes back. Bit difficult now with the M4 in the way, but uh, that is the story. Uh, I will obviously cover some more standing stone uh, stories and origin. There's a really good one about a giant and a giant desk that were outwitted by a cobbler in North Wales for Angerman's sake, and there are a few other ones as well I'll cover. And there are a few stories with treasure under, underneath them, or fairy entrances, and again, these are some basis in truth due to archaeological finds over the years. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and hope to see you in episode 20. Thanks for listening.